You're listening to Parasearch Radio. News, views and reviews from the world of the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch Radio or their affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Good evening and welcome to the Haunted Connection Show. Now I know you're used to hearing the lovely Jane and Neil, but Neil is currently away doing some secret, top secret filming project that he's got on. But we are a very special show tonight. We are live from the Haunted Antiques Paranormal Research Centre and we have Mr Paul Rook and the lovely Jane Rowley as well as Lucy Albrighton in the studio. Good evening guys, how are you? Yeah, good evening. Hi. Good evening. So, All good. Yeah. Busy weekend up there this weekend. Moved into the new um, areas, haven't you? Yeah, it's been, I know Neil's had a lot of help. There's been so many people coming up and it's just amazing to see all the people coming together as friends and the amount of people who volunteered time and they've moved things and they've painted things and it, it was just an endless stream of help and I, and I know Neil's really grateful for all of that. It looks fantastic from the photos I've seen in there. Now, Jane, you've you been away, haven't you? You've been I'm on holiday. So um, this is your first time in? No, I was in on Sunday. Uh, I came back Sunday um, after being stuck on the M1, uh, or lorry turned over. So at, at one point, Neil was going to cancel the sounds, but I did manage to get back. So I came to the seance on Sunday evening, and that was quite interesting because it was a full moon as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and we seem to have a lot of new spirits coming in, a lot of energies, and they seem to be from just around the local sort of area. Um do you think? Do you think that's um, because of the activity? You know, everyone being there and the vibe, and the, you know, everyone's connecting with each other, and it's exciting because everyone's been doing something different. You know, do you think it's that's the reason why? Yeah, but I, I also think, and we've always said this for a long time, that this place seems to shine like a bit of a beacon in the spirit world, and it does bring a lot of energy through from, you know, good, bad, the ugly. <laughs> <laughs> thoughts through and I think because of the heightened energy because of you know it, it had been buzzing all day um I just think it did draw in a lot more energies and I think a lot of um, the spirits did come in just to see what was going on excellent so what are your vibes you know you're a psychic medium yourself um is there anything specific yourself has picked up um I am quite aware of of um of an elderly man who's got part of his leg missing and he's got a crutch. And I've been picking him up more or less constantly since I've been here. Uh, so I picked him up on Sunday last night. He was here as well. Um, and I do feel that he is around tonight. So I, I've, I've still got to get, I need to do some more work with him and find out a bit more about what's going on. Mm. Mm. So Paul, what's your first impressions of the new rooms? Well, I think they look really good actually. It is just like um, walking into like a, a traditional what you would think as a museum. Um, obviously, you still you've got the old artifacts around, but the rooms are done up as well now. So like you walk into the the army room, and Neil's put some like uh, camouflage netting along the ceiling, and it it's painted like a, a khaki dark green type thing as well. So it's all fit in with what the artifacts are in the room. Mm. So it could even draw more energies to them because it's in that sort of environment. Do you think because each room is is it each room's themed now? Um, yeah, I, there, there is a few rooms that are themed. Um, the the clown room, what well, I call the clown room, that was before is, is pretty much still the same. I mean, you still got the dolls and the clowns, um, and it's not really decorated that much, um, but. It, it, it's pretty much a little bit similar to what it was before. Um, so although it's not themed, you, you've still got all the artefacts in there still anyway. Mm. So have they spread the artefacts out um, across the rooms? Yeah, yeah. They, they've like, as I said, they've, some of the artefacts that were in the clown room before are now in the army room. Um, then you've still got the occult areas. 
So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's spread out a lot more and it is so much better. So is each um, is they each area set towards a specific experiment or could you just do what you wanted in the different rooms? You can still do whatever you like in any of the rooms. Um, there is one room being set up as a Gansfield experiment room. Mm-hmm. So if you wanted to do the Gansfield when you are down here, then you obviously it's all set up ready for you. Mm-hmm. Um, which, which again is a good idea you know it gives people the insight into it um, and if you wanted to come down here long term and keep doing it then it's all literally set up for you to do so cool right Luce you're a regular there at the centre aren't you yeah I am yeah what's your feelings on the new the new rooms Fab, I absolutely love it. And it's like Paul said, it's it's spread out now as well, so you can actually work with the objects a little bit more. I mean, it doesn't feel crowded. It just it feels so long in here at the minute. But like we said, that's going to change because the energies have got to get going and they've got to get settled and everything. Yep. It takes a little while, doesn't it, to settle things down? Yeah. But you said earlier on, um, but just before we came on air, there was activity happening. You were experiencing things that you couldn't quite explain at this point. Can you tell me about that, please? Oh, it's just uh, knocks and bangs and taps and stuff, but uh, I don't know yet whether it is spirit. But It might be, but we've just walked in and it is cold and it might be heating up, but... Me and Jane definitely heard a tap on a box that I've just brought in with the Parasearch books then. Oh, maybe it's going, woohoo, the book's here. Yeah. <laughs> even, even in the spirit world, they want to get hold of our book. I know, right? How amazing is that? Gosh, everybody. Uh-huh. Don't forget, it's available at the HOPRC or available on Amazon Worldwide, everybody. <laughs> Shameless plug, all I'm saying. <laughs> so... You two um, ladies work psychic medium wise. You're very, you know, you work very spiritually in that way. When you when you're together and you're both working, do you find that you get the same thing when you're at the centre? Sometimes I tend to clarify with you, don't I, Jane? Yeah. Um, whether um, a spirit has been seen, like I think it was the hooded figure, wasn't it? Yeah. I, but if I do see anything and I am yeah unsure I always just say Jane (laughs) as it's been noted before but anything I see or experience anyway I always either message Neil or say to Neil look this has happened so he can document it Mm -hmm. because that is something you do isn't it Jane up there you do document what people will get or their experiences up there that, and that's going to, the recording of stuff is going to happen even more um, when we do the 12 hour lockdowns. But I'll just come back to the, the question that you asked about the mediumship side. Yeah, please. We, we do get a lot of mediums up here. And <clears throat> I, I, I like to see other mediums work, and I do enjoy watching other people sort of work with spirit as well. And one of the key things I think that people have to remember is that all mediums potentially work on different vibrations. So you could have two mediums in a room picking up on different things. And because they're not necessarily picking up on the same thing, it doesn't necessarily mean one's better than the other. It just means that people are working perhaps on different vibrations. And I think that's something that people ought to remember so you know when they when they are working with mediums that not everybody picks up the same thing. Mm. No, I think that's a fair point. So I was wondering if people like um, psychically linked to get the same sort of thing um, when there's a few mediums working in the same way because I've had that before where I've worked with a medium and I can feel I feel like it's a piggyback thing, a link thing. Yeah, I think it's just connecting with the energies. But when people say, um, like how you say psychic medium, I don't class myself as a psychic medium because I, uh, my understanding of working psychically is when you're working with living people and you you're psychically tapping into their energy. Mm -hmm. Um, My understanding is that 
I mean, I class myself as like just a spiritual medium because I work with spirit and I just tend to work with dead people. <laughs> <laughs> but that's an interesting definition that you, you've said there. Um, because there are different ways of working and there are different terminologies for how people work. And that's a really interesting way of putting it, actually, what you've just said there. So um, it's worth clarifying sometimes what terminology means. We're coming up this quite a bit at the moment on Power Search, breaking down the terms and um, getting down to the base meanings of that. So that's really helpful, actually, because somebody would say a psychic medium is the same as a spiritualist medium, and they're not, are they? No, I don't think so. I mean, you could class like um, uh, like a gypsy uh, who does the um, crystal ball readings. I mean, what they're actually doing is working psychically with the person sitting in front of them, tapping into their energy. The crystal ball is generally just like a um, a prop type thing. You know, it just it just adds a bit of um, yeah, it just adds a bit to the to the um, reading or whatever. Um, mm. So, I mean, like when I do um, card readings, I, I when I do the tarot readings, I work with spirit. I ask, it's, it's a bit like a private sitting and a tarot reading at the same time because I invite spirit in to to sort of get the cards, if you like, for that person and to, and to help me read the cards with that person. So it just depends really on how you want to work and... Um, and how, what your understanding is really because my understanding with um psychic mediums is that they tap into that person the living person's energy and they take that reading from there mm. yeah it's a it's a totally different ball game because like i i work with tools as you know um like tarots and crystals and stuff like that and that's actually quite a good definition because i don't sense a dead person's spirit particularly do you know what i mean i don't get your uncle bob coming through and telling me things which is a very strong definition between what you do and, and the way i work in a funny kind of way if you know what i mean even yeah. though you do both yeah you're using spirit to help you do that whereas i'm using literally the tool so yeah it's really good definition i like that so going back to the documenting um the evidence experiences shall we say that people have at the center you're documenting those aren't you yeah we um we have a book um when people come and have a look round, we ask for people's feedbacks and ask for them to record their experiences i also have my little book that i draw in a lot of the spirits that i've encountered up here and work that we've done with them and things like the creatures where where because when I connect with the energy and, and I can see them, I can then draw them, and that's then that's how I started to work originally with Neil, uh, when, with the team when we were investigating in the early days. Because I could see I could see what we were working with, and they couldn't. So I used to draw it, so they they got a, a basic understanding of of the energy we were working with. So that's where that sort of all stemmed from, really, and. Um, it's just progressed on from there because my first book now is was for like the first two cent, uh, years of the centre. Uh, now we've moved up uh, and we've, we've um, now we've got the new rooms. I've now started a new book for this next coming year for for our next ad- adventures. Mm. So um, it's it's going to be interesting. So are you finding a lot of? Um collaboration between the two you know like um corroboration that's a better word um between what people are getting are people getting very similar things happening and experiencing the same sort of things yeah and uh, i've found it really interesting that when i've drawn pictures and things and i've recorded things in my book and people have then when they're on their investigations they've come through and they've said um oh um I've just encountered this and we'll say, well, can you describe it or, you know, tell us about it. And they'll, they'll tell us what they've seen. And I instantly recognize what they, what they connect. You can find the picture in my book. And I show it helps a lot because it's other people that have seen it as well. And, and, and the drawings and that, when identify what the seen from a drawing then that makes me feel that we are doing the right thing mm-hmm. 
Okay. Um, yeah. So it, it's it's quite an interesting location down there, anyway. Um, and yeah, I, 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 at the moment, I think it's quite relaxed yeah. and chilled. And we get a lot of people coming up as well. You can feel the energy um, changing as well, and, and, and I do think people bring energies with them. Um, and I like the fact as well that when people come up here, we can help people because there's a lot of people that come up that don't that have experienced something at home or mm-hmm. perhaps at work and they can't explain it and they come up and they tell us about their stories. And if we can help people, then that's, that's yeah. a good thing. And yeah. that's always been a focus, hasn't it, for the centre is, is focusing on understanding knowledge and helping people. Yeah. And it also helps us as well um, with new, um, just with different ways of working with paranormal. Or with one case that we had, a lady brought up this little nightlight. It was it was a new br- uh, nightlight that was being plugged into a child's bedroom. And every time it was plugged in and he was left in the room on his own, he would absolutely scream the place down and he wouldn't sleep in the room. He ended up going to bed in there and he wouldn't. And we just kept sort of pointing at the night light. So somebody brought it up the tree. And I took it in and I sat for quite a while with it. And I could actually see this man with the light. And he was actually, because it was a bit like a bluish light, he was actually just being drawn to the light and feeding off the energy. So I drew this man and we took a photo and we sent it to the little boy's mum. And she actually showed it to the little boy. And the little boy says, I don't like that picture. And his mum, you know, his mum um, he was getting a bit upset. And he says, uh, he turned to his mum and he says, but I haven't seen that ghost for some time now. Mm. So they took the light out to the bedroom. So if you can help people like that, and, and it, you know, it, it can bring a little bit of peace to um, somebody, somebody, then that's going to be a good thing. Mm, absolutely. Mm. Okay, guys, have you changed anything in the room? Because all of a sudden, your sound quality has just gone totally muffled. No, no. nothing's been changed at all. And now it's clear as a bell. Yep. We, we, last night, um, the Haunted um, Live guys were up here, and some of their equipment was going a bit funny. And in this room, we know that the previous tenants that were here they were constantly complaining about their electrical stuff all going wrong. And um, since we moved in upstairs, they said to us that um, all their electrical stuff is constantly being affected. They had to keep replacing stuff. Light bulbs would blow, computers would go. And it was just like a constant drain on their electrical stuff. So it is interesting that we're finding that some of the gadgets and things are being affected. Mm. Very much so, because that was completely muffled. And I'm sitting here thinking, what on earth? And my end was going crazy on my mic. And then all of a sudden it cleared. Yeah. Maybe someone wants some attention. (laughs) Maybe they do. Well, they need to step forward and start talking, please. (laughs) Whoever that would be. (laughs) You. (laughs) (laughs) So have you got, um, so you're there for the evening. So what have you got planned for the evening in the centre? Well, because we didn't plan on actually coming down here, it was just like a last minute um, thing to put together. Um, we don't actually have any equipment, so I think maybe working a bit spiritually, um, maybe doing like a seance or something or Ouija board session or something, just to see what we can get and see if we can experience anything as a, on a personal level. Mm-hmm. Um, and then maybe just document it for, for Neil. Well, being as you've got two spiritual babies at your fingertips, it would be rude not to, I feel, do something with them, you know. So yeah. talking of Ouija boards, Paul, I know that yep. there's, there's an experiment that you're doing with Neil um, in regards to that. Do you want to explain to everybody what that is? Okay, basically, I want to try and dispel some of the myths about the Ouija board, and I would like to have some of the Ouija board, if someone has got a Ouija board that they don't want, to send it into the Antique Centre um, so that we can do um, everything that you're not supposed to do with a Ouija board, see if it does actually um, 
elicit more activity. No. No. <laughs> Lucy, Lucy's hearing things at the moment. Is she hearing uh, things? What's she hearing? Well, she she said, "Like, was it anyone's stomach going?" Like, no. Uh, someone's growling at her. Now. Ooh, raw. <laughs> uh, it's probably the bear that you keep going on about when you go bear with me. Okay, bear with me, bear with me. Um, So if you have got a Ouija board that you no longer want to use, then send it to the Haunted Antiques Research Centre and, uh, you know, it'll take part in part of this experiment that you're doing, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we want to, like, um, with one board, we just want to break it in half. Then we want to throw one away, see if it comes back, um, (laughs) and burn one and... Just things like that, but we'll we'll, t- we'll pick them at random. So if we do get loads sent in, um, we will pick a couple at random, um, and the ones that don't get used will have displayed in the in the centre as well. So cool. yeah, it just goes exhibit. Cool. Now on the socials, you've been putting out about um, giving your regards to Zozo. Um, there's a Zozo <laughs> thing going on. Do you want to explain what that is about to everybody? Okay, every time we do a board um, here at the centre, um, we get a spirit and it's very um, playful and jokey and stuff. And when we ask what its name is, it comes up with Zozo. And I'm like, really? Go away. Do you want to come back and try that? Again? I, don't, I don't, no, I don't buy this Zozo rubbish. It's, uh, no, it's just I rubbish. I see a really weird comment, and it did actually make me laugh that apparently 2020 is supposed to be the year of Zozo. Oh, God. <laughs> just get it, really. Um, so, yeah, no, that, that's what that's. It, it's just a, uh, a joke. It's a running joke with spirit, maybe, I think. Maybe so. <laughs> maybe so. Um, do you have, just out of curiosity, because this is a thing that's trending at the moment on the socials, a broom that will stand all by itself. They stand up by themselves anyway. I know. It's the amount of people that are doing it and uh, it's on the socials. It was put out by NASA saying that due to certain alignments of, plan- of the planet, it, you'd only ever get your broom to stand up on this particular day at this particular time. It was a, a media ploy by, by NASA themselves. Um, and you can get your broom to stand up, everybody, any time of the year, yeah. any day of the week. Doesn't matter. Just saying. <laughs> How gullible some people are, but it just goes to prove it. Really, at the end of the day, they should have left it for April the first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would have been a good end, wouldn't it? Or maybe it was like. Yeah. And, then, and they thought, no, no, we've got to do it now because all the spiritualists will be up in arms about it and thinking it's paranormal. <laughs> Who knows, right? But I woke up thinking it was the Sorcerer's Apprentice going on this morning on my on my social feed. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? <laughs> well, on Friday, I'm going to be visiting the Harry Potter world, so I'm sure there'll be plenty of broomsticks there as well. There's dancing broomsticks there, I think you'll find. Awesome. <clears throat> Fantastic. I You're shall be taking standing up yeah. ones. Anyway, back to the Haunted Antiques Research Centre. You do have a few things set around. You've got something on the stairwell at the moment, haven't you? Yeah, um, Jane, do you want to explain? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's just a bit of motion sensor, really. Um, they come, I, I got them, I think it was at Halloween, and they've got a little sensor in the bottom, and you literally just have to brush past them or walk past them, and they actually light up and make a sound. I've got a little witch one, and I've got a little ghost one, and they have been really effective in, in, in some investigations that we've done, particularly sort of outside, um, We've had some really good responses in graveyards and things because if you work in, um, they're just really good. It's a bit like a REM pod, really, and it, it's good that you can hear it. You don't have to sort of see it or be near it. You can actually hear it going off, and when you know there's no nothing around it, then uh, it, it, it does make it a bit interesting. Would so, a breeze set it off? No, we've tried all that. It, you literally have to sort of go quite close in front of it, Um so it's. I mean, we've we've had it out on some windy nights, and it's not gone off at all. Oh, okay. But you, it, we've got the little ghost on the back stairs at the moment, so if it goes off, we we can hear him. 
Would you make you well clearly? I'd make you jump. Would it scare you? <laughs> no. Um, I'd probably no. want to know who's who'd set it off. <laughs> I'd be out the door first. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, this is a question I've been wanting to ask. Now, I know you, you, there are times where you or Neil are, are there alone. Yeah. I know you have moments where you're alone there. But have you ever stayed overnight on your own? No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't? No. One person who I know that's ever attempted to stay all night completely on their own, and that was Drew. Um, Drew Fagrell, when he, Elliot, when he did it as a, a charity event. Yeah, that's um, right. Event, and I think he started about eight o'clock with the intention of it being a full twelve-hour lockdown on his own. And by eleven o'clock at night, he was—he—he he, he just had enough. He shut himself in the tea room and he just won't go any further. Oh. He, he, had, he had quite an awful experience, and, it, and I think he upset him for a long time. Really? Yeah. He's but quite he, level-headed he, as well, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, and he's done a lot of investigating. He's done a lot of, um, you know, he's quite experienced. But um, you know, we did quite feel sorry for him. But it, as he said, the building is a completely different monster when you're completely on your own. Then it's it does play it does play with you, and you know, we, it's a lot of people have said, "Oh, I'll stay on my own," and and somebody will just be in the tea room or something. But that's not the same. We mean completely mm. on your own. And um, he's the only person who's ever tried to attempt it, and um, nobody else has sort of done it yet. There's a challenge out there for everybody. Yeah, that that's a challenge on the table, particularly now with the new rooms. And there's an area that you will be able to bed down in, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. There's we've got a really nice little base room now, and that's uh, <clears throat> that's going to be great for people. Uh, as a base room, particularly if they're doing overnights and they want to have a sleep away from sort of the activity where people aren't necessarily going to be stepping over them or <laughs> yeah. Yeah. new things. So there's a separate room completely now. And uh, there's going to be lots more things planned. So the 12-hour lockdowns, they're going to be really interesting because we what, are going to be recording those. What is your plan for the 12-hour lockdowns? So the idea being that we're going to have roughly between probably 16 to 20 people and we will be conducting experiments and there will be, we will be recording everything, things like um, the weather, the moon, uh, whether it's full moon, things like whether it's winter solstice, summer solstice, um, all those sort of things to see if there is any um difference in activity but we're going to be doing experiments as well um some of the experiments will be repeated each time to see if there's any difference uh we will be trying new experiments and people will be able to do experiments um any ideas that they've got you know we're going to welcome anybody to come in and just do different things as long as it's all recorded and written down because it's um it's a, what we're trying to do as well long term is say after 12 months when we've done sort of 12 of these investigations and all the information is going to be captured on one big spreadsheet and hopefully then we're going to see if there's any patterns any um any sort of um sequences in things whether a full moon makes a difference or you know hopefully try and catch capture some real good um information some data brilliant and that's what it's all about isn't it it is and i think one of the things as well um, when, when people sort of write things down in the book and stuff you know when you get one person that's had a good experience with an item then that's quite interesting but when you get over a period of time 10 or 20 people experiencing the same sort of thing with the same item then surely that's got to be a bit more than coincidence it certainly starts to build up a pattern, doesn't it? And although you talk a lot and you have a lot of people, you know, come up there, you don't often release experiences that people have had. So the contamination of that is 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 minimal, I would say. I know a lot of people have said that, you know, are we a research centre? What research do we do and stuff like that? But some of this stuff can't be captured overnight. It's going to take a long, long time 
to record and capture and, and probably even, you know, after we've done all this, there may be nothing to show. But unless we try it, you just don't know, do you? You know, it's, it's some of this stuff's been... I don't think there's many locations in the UK where people can go and have like a constant in the venue, you know, where you can go to the same venue on a regular basis and sort of do the same sort of things and capture all that information to see how it, you know, see what the conclusions are. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. I think you're dead right there. And it is something that the centre seems to be um, perfectly focused for. Um, to, like you say, build up that data, build up that spreadsheet and uh, see if there, there are any patterns that come out of that. Um, it, and, you know, like you say, you've got the perfect community and um, building up there to be able to start trying to achieve that. Yeah. So I know when I was doing Investigate, when we were when we were a team before, when we used to take guests or when we used to do team-only investigations, you know, going for four hours in one building isn't enough. And you go to that venue and then you go to a different venue and you go to lots of different venues, but it's never enough. Four or five hours isn't enough time to try and capture things because you're just always starting at the same point. You're just sort of basically seeing what's there, seeing what activity is there, but you can never really sort of go back on a regular basis and try the same things and capture all the information and then put it into some sort of, you know, conclusion or order or just try and see what the results are just to see if there is anything that you, you know, that's that's worth recording. Mm. So is this something that you and Neil have uh, come up with or has this come from an external source? No, this is something that we've sort of, this was one of the plans when we first got, um, you know, when, when Neil first got this place, it was just, um, it was almost like it was meant to be anyway because how it all came around. But as we started working, you could really see the potential of being in one place, one stationary place that you could keep going back to, keep doing the same experiments or different experiments. And some of the experiments we've done, you could probably never do in um, a, a venue um you know, that you're perhaps hiring for the night. I mean, things like the work we've done with the big mirror. Mm-hmm. You couldn't sort of go back and do stuff with a big mirror um, if you're sort of renting the venue. Yeah, you're right there. No, you're totally right. Trying to get back into um, a location time and time again is costly for a start and incredibly tricky to do because, uh, you know, we've attempted that ourselves, haven't we, Paul? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think this is why this place is so popular because not only are they, you, uh, you've got Neil and Jane doing their own research projects, but if you're the paranormal team out there and you've got a project that you want to do and you need a location that you can go back to constantly, this this is a place to do it. I've, I mean, you know, I've got a couple of projects that I want to do um, and I've spoke to Neil about it and we're going to be running them, and, you know, so... It's, I don't think that's what makes this so different to some of the other locations out there. And it is starting to become almost like, like I said, a community. You know, we I know this term is bounced around time and time again, and it's, it's not ever something that I think the entire field is going to achieve. But the people that go up to the centre, from what I see on the socials, it this community, this para-unity is occurring within the centre, isn't it, Jane? Yeah, very much so. And we've had people now that have, that have um, been coming up um, ever since we've opened. And one of the key things that you um, that you sort of recognise in these people is that they want somewhere to go with like-minded people where you can share your experiences, learn about new experiences, learning about other people's experiences, and there's not many places where you can actually go and sit down and talk with people about ghosts or spiritual creatures or things that go bump in the night or all these weird and wonderful things. You can't sit down and do it at work and you can't, you know, a lot of time you can't sit down and do it with your family because okay. <laughs> they're just an absolute crap. There's <laughs> <laughs> a true story there. People come up and... Um, but I think that's been a real reflection on 
Neil himself because Neil is, uh, you know, he's just genuinely a nice guy and um, he will welcome anybody and anybody can come up and, and you know, he's opened this place up to share really his paranormal vision and um, it's working really well. And I think, you know, if, if there was more places like this, then it would make such a big difference in the in the para unity, you know, with para unity and in the paranormal field itself. Mm. I think para unity would work a lot better if we didn't have social media. Social media destroys a lot of things, and I think a lot of people take stuff out of context. Yeah. Where if you actually got a place where you can go and meet people face to face and talk and communicate that properly, it, it brings people together. I think it's so much better. Mm -hmm. Just out of curiosity, have any of the um, larger bodies of research like SPR or ASAP or the Ghost Club, have any of those reached out to the centre? No, not as far as I'm aware, unless they've reached out to Neil, but I'm sure he would have mentioned it if they had. But, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe perhaps we've just not... Um, uh, advertise the fact that we do that we do do you know the research that we do and all the fact that we, we we're not we're just doing the research really I think to satisfy um, our own questions and our, our own things that we want to do and I think it's that personal journey but if any of them people did want to come up and see the centre and work with us I'm sure Neil would be you know more than welcoming yeah, no, I'm absolutely sure that, that that's the case. I don't think that's... Uh, I don't know, maybe the gulf is too wide between those um, bodies and the, the paranormal community in general. Who knows what will happen in the future? Um, we shall see. We shall see. Um, right, so let's go back to the artefacts that are up there. Um, of all the artefacts that are up there, and I'm going to go through all of you, um, what's your favourite, Jane? What's your plan uh, that you get the best vibe from? I think um, probably the big mirror because there's still more I want to do with that. Um, I don't know if anybody saw the um, live we did on Halloween about going into the mirror, um, but we did we did do a bit of an experiment around the mirror and I would very much like to um, continue with some of that. And, um, yeah, that's uh, opened up a whole new um, field for me, really, uh, a, a different avenue mm -hmm. that I want to try. OK, Lucy? Um, I like, I can never say it, is it Ninkondi dolls? Mm. The Ninkondi dolls. The Ninkondi yeah. dolls. I can never say it. The Naily really... dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Naily I... dude. I'm a bit energy off them. When I first came up they were the main thing that I was attracted to. Um I don't I don't know why to this day I'm still yet to find out but we've had some when we've done Ouija's and stuff mm. it's out there we've had some weird things coming through, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Regarding them. Yeah, um, yeah we've <laughs> <laughs> Paul Um to be honest, I'm not particularly drawn to anything. Um, I, I like the collection as a whole. There isn't. I don't think I could pick out one particular object. Um, I mean, you know, you know, I've got a fascination with medical stuff anyway. So, like, they've got medical supplies upstairs, and I like those. But it's that's just a pure professional thing. Um, but as a whole, it, yeah, it, it's just captivating, and there's so much to experiment with that that's what keeps drawing me back that's what you so, like about the center yeah definitely and and it is really welcoming and neil is fantastic um you can sit and talk to him for hours and he's gonna get such a big head when he listens back to the show guys is all i'm is, saying yeah yeah <laughs> You get to meet other like-minded paranormal investigators. Um, 
you know, some of them I, I've spoke to on, on social media, not always got along, but meeting them face to face, it just sort of, you know, you're all there for the same reason and you all seem to get along and yeah, it, it's a good, it's almost like a family um, environment. That's what I like about this place. And there's more rooms to explore now, and more scope for the centre. Yeah, yeah, they've got they've got some good um, things coming up. I mean, I, I spoke to Neil the other week, and Jane mentioned it as well earlier about doing film nights down here. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to some of those. You love a film, don't you? Absolutely. <laughs> You're going for the older films, though, aren't you, Jane, at the centre for that one you're thinking of? Films that are the, the sort of vintage films, really. It's, it's like you've been surprised, your feet to cushion. Um, Quite a mess. Christopher Lee. <laughs> you know, it's those sort of old vampire films and, and the um, Frankensteins and that sort of thing. The films that are out in the public domain, really. So um, it's going to be just a good fun night. There'll be the film, we're going to be having food, and then there's going to be, like, investigations afterwards in the centre. So um, I think there's about four or five nights that Neil sorted out. So if anybody's mm. interested in coming on one of those, they're more than welcome. I know tickets are selling really quite well for that. I and can understand the draw of that, definitely. Nothing better than those old movies. They're very em- emotively evocative, aren't they? Mm. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are, are just really interested in the social side of it as well, just coming along because they can bring their own alcohol if they want to, have a couple of glasses of wine, and it's uh, it's good, just going to be a really good social evening. Which is, a, again, it's a great way of incorporating your hobby, your interest, and research. Now, I want to cover that point of research because you mentioned earlier there's been some huge criticism regarding the name of the uh, the centre itself, because mainly because of the word research in there. Research can take its form in many, many ways, and it is never a five-minute job. It is never something that you can go... If you class yourself as something to do with the research, it's an ongoing, long-term commitment to a project. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And since we've been working up here... It has opened up so many avenues of uh, investigation that we want to do. And a lot of that time is spent sort of reading as well. You know, I read so many books. I don't hardly watch any telly, but I do read lots of books. And and to me, every time we've sort of done uh, an investigation or an experiment or something like that, and it's generated even more questions, I have to go and find a book and start reading <laughs> Because I want to find, you know, I want to find the answers. And that's one of the biggest things for me. Um, you know, I spend a lot of time up here uh, it, and it's all done on a voluntary basis. But for me, working in this centre is the only way I feel that I am going to find the truth and the answers to a lot of the things I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And isn't that what it's all about? Expanding your mind, keeping your mind open, exploring different um, work that other people have done and utilising that knowledge in a way that helps you understand what your paranormal journey is all about. Yeah. And, And for me as well, it's understanding the spiritual sort of connection that people have had, um, since the dawn of time, since man's been created and how we got here and how all that spiritual, you know, right through the pharaohs, the Incas, the Egyptians, you know, all through the native Red Indians and all, you know, there's just so much information out there to read up on. And it's the thoughts and the experiences that I've had now and my understanding has changed so much in the last two years from the work that we've done and the research that we've done, the reading, you know, all the books, and and, and I still feel that we're only scratching at the at the surface. There's so much more that we that we've got to learn. Well, I I totally agree. No matter how much I do research, um, even though 
I've had criticisms aimed at me for um, not being out in the field as much, but I do a heck of a lot of research and it just gives me more questions and more thirst for finding some form of explanation. And, you know, I work very privately. I don't like to put it out there what I do a lot of the time. Um, But that's because it's personal. It's mine. It's to do with me. It's not to do with the public. And... So researching for me is fundamental to to my personal journey and that's another thing you're creating at the centre is the access to information that somebody may not have had by recommending books and selling books that you have up there, which brings me nicely. I, I, I'm going to do a shameless plug. The book of research is now stocked at the HAPRC. <laughs> have you had a chance to look at it yet? Not yet. I've only seen it. Uh, I'm not. I will. I will actually get a copy and read it. But I've got a few books in. It's have to get in the queue at the minute. <laughs> I know. I know. I've got a, like a big pile of books I haven't read myself, uh, but I've helped write this one, so <laughs> I know what's in this one. Um, Lucy, you've got the book, haven't you? I have. Yeah. And I know some people would say that you're biased, but what's your honest opinion? Um, I think it's lovely to see. Um, a book on blogs that everybody at the station, well, pretty much everybody has written at the station. And it's just nice to have them in, um, in a book, whether it's um, your own thoughts, your own topics, whatever you like. It's just brilliant. And as a whole, I think it's a great paranormal book because it's different. There you go, guys from Lucy's yeah. herself, go buy a copy. <laughs> Available at the HAPRC now. I'm going to keep plugging it. I'm sorry, everybody, shameless plugging, but I don't care. <laughs> I'm very proud of the, the station's achievement on that. And um, like you say... Sorry? I said you should be as well, it's absolutely brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. Um, anyway, there are other things that you can buy up there, aren't there? You can get Haunted Magazine up there. Yeah, we should have, be having the new magazines tomorrow. The next edition will be here tomorrow night. So if anybody wants one of those, they'll be uh, they'll be in stock tomorrow. Yeah. You also do membership here as well, don't you? Yeah, we do. So, so for the whole year, it is. 20- no, but lifetime. Oh, is it live now? Yeah. Oh, that's even better. So your lifetime membership is twenty five pounds for a one off one off payment, and there's just so much stuff included in the membership. There's you can get discounts, so staying at Bosworth Hall, uh, discounts with different teams on investigations. Um, you get access to live the live feeds channel. There's just so much stuff um, for a membership pack. So um, I think it is all on the website, which is www.researchcentre.com, I think. If I've got it wrong, Neil will slap me. (laughs) 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 I did a quick Google on this one. (laughs) Wantedresearchcentre.com. Sorry, Neil. (laughs) com. go over there now again you've you've actually um had a lot of criticism aimed at you for that um lifetime membership um and it used to be for a year but neil's put it to um a lifetime thing mainly because he's awful at keeping track of things i think that was more it weren't it (laughs) um I don't disagree. There are a lot of costs involved in running a centre like this and it's integral to the field that these places start appearing for all the reasons we've outlined tonight. It's growing. The centre has got more rooms now. It's got more scope to do experiments that you want to do. It is hired out all year this year, isn't it? You've got no space left at all this year, have you? We, we are finding that we need more days in the week. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but, well, I mean, we, we we do do a lot more than that. You know, there's um, I've been running meditation classes up here and development circles. There are sort of more opportunities for things like that to happen. 
Um, but going back to the membership, I know one of the biggest things about the membership is the fact that Neil did sort of want a club, if you like, a bit of an exclusive, so where where all the people who are genuinely interested in what we do could come and join the live feeds and all that sort of thing without the trolls and the critics and, and everybody sort of upsetting regular people who come along and watch. And that's quite important to Neil because the trolls... He, he doesn't want those sort of people coming in and spoiling other people's experiences. And unfortunately, this field does seem to attract its fair share. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, so. People sort of online being completely, you know, very abusive, putting very abusive comments about people sitting around a sounds table. Then that, that was the final straw, I think. And that's then when it, it all went to... Um, you know, like a closed group as such. So, um, because, you know, nobody needs those sort of people ruining other people's experiences. You know, it's just it's just not fair. No, it isn't fair at all. And, uh, you know, particularly when there's a an incredibly powerful intention there for the good of all, not just the good of some. Mm. Yes. And that's the key point for the Haunted Antiques Research Centre. It's for the good of all, not for the good of one. Yeah. I mean, our ambition really is to get as many people in and to for them to have an experience. You know, when we, when we invite people to, you know, when the doors are open, people um, are welcome to come in. It's at, the centre's open Saturdays and Mondays, the general public. And we want people to come in and, and hold the objects and, have an experience and perhaps have a bit of a go on a Ouija board or do all that sort of thing so they can experience a little bit for themselves. And, um, you know, it's all about other people's experiences and sharing that. I, I totally agree. And you've come such a long way in a very relatively short space of time. Um, and it's been an absolutely fascinating um, thing to watch from afar um, for me. I remember interviewing Neil with Paul um, way back when he just had a couple of pieces in his um, garage because <laughs> Julie didn't want them in the house. <laughs> um, and, we, you know, when we look at them, when we look at, you know, from speaking to Neil back at back, right back at the beginning to, to where you are now, I'm going to put it out there. I'm incredibly proud to be part of um, that journey. And I'm incredibly proud of you guys for actually creating the centre and what you're achieving there. So well done um, for all of you who are involved up the centre. It's um, an incredible feat and an incredible achievement. So very, really well done. Yeah, thank you. And it, 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 it's, it's, it's been an amazing experience. I can't believe it's been two years already. Mm. And although we've done so much, I, there's just so much more we've got to do. And even right back when I first met Neil about six, seven years ago, when we first ended up on an investigation in Hinkley Museum together, both as guests, um, I do think even back then we were sort of destined to be on this journey. And it is a very much a pairing. I mean, you know, you're supposed to be doing a Q&A um, for various reasons. It's, you know, between illness and, and holidays and stuff, that hasn't happened yet. It will happen, everybody. Don't you worry. They will be doing their live Q&A <laughs> session. But they said we're going to do it together because they can't, you, you come as a, you know, a co-host duo. Um, and you like, you know, you're very, very close, aren't you, you and Neil? Well, we share a lot of, um, we share... I think we share the same sort of vision as in what we want out of the, the paranormal and, and the experience, experiments and, you know, all the, the things that we want to do. And we, we do share a complete open mindedness, but also we trust each other as well. And so working together for the last, yeah, it's, it's got to be six, seven years, um, because when when not long after I met Neil on this investigation, you know, he then started his own group. And I was then invited as a member of the team. And so we've done the investigations team together. We've done the venue groups together. And we've worked together for quite a long time. And we just trust each other. And I think that's one of the biggest things because um, – and, and for me, it's just sort of like an open 
it's just such an open field to just try anything and everything. Because I know previously under the, with with one of the other people that were working in the team, we we wouldn't have been able to do the experiments and everything that we do now. And I think that's one of the great things because you can have a, a completely nut job of an idea and you can go along to me and just <laughs> try this and you'll go, yeah, all right then. So, you know, and there's not all this, oh, no, I don't know about this and this, that and the other. So I think that's one of the reasons why it has worked so well. And I've always um, sort of supported Neil as well in, you know, when he's needed team members or, you know, he's wanted to do things. So it's um, always been that about helping out as well. So it's it's just an evolving journey. It's, and it has been a real good, the last two years has just been an amazing experience. And, you know, I'm just so looking forward to the next few years where we can just do so much more. And watch this space, really, because like you say, it's forever evolving, it's forever changing. And uh, what with the new rooms as well, it's going to be even more amazing, isn't it? You know, some of the things that you're able to do and achieve. Yeah, we are forever learning. And I think that's the biggest thing. You know, we learn in new, every time you come up here, there's just something new or something different. And I don't think that anybody, I mean, we've said this before, I don't think there's any experts in the field. And everybody's constantly learning. And if you can learn more from other people and your experiences, then, you know, you've got everything to go for. Nothing to lose, everything to gain, right? Yep. You work very closely, before we finish, um, with Sims Antique Centre. And this is another criticism that has been aimed at the centre for just getting any old object from an antique centre and saying it's haunted. Um, That's not the case at all, is it? No. No, not at all. Um, we've been there quite a few times. And see, I think Neil's relationship with Phil has been really good because without Sims Vintage Antiques, the Haunted Antiques Research, Research Centre wouldn't really have evolved like it has done because I know Neil wrote out to lots and lots of antique centres and Phil was the only one who replied, um, which then gave Neil sort of a step up to just sort of do, you know, he had this vision and it enabled him to actually start the journey and do what he wanted to do. And he's been able to do it in the way that he wanted to do it. And it's been a very good relationship. But Phil knows the sort of things that Neil's looking for. You know, when we've been over there, we haven't just sort of picked anything and everything up. It's always been a focus on what we're drawn to, why we're drawn to it, what what is it showing us, what is it telling us, what is it teaching us. And there's a lot more to just sort of just picking up any old thing and just bringing it back to the centre. Exactly. On that note, we are drawing to the end of the show. It doesn't stop there tonight, guys. Um, The guys will be there for a little while longer. They're going to do some spiritual experimentation while they're there in the new rooms. Um, Hopefully, Paul will be able to go live on the Parasearch Radio group page at some point to... um, you know, give you a little bit of a sneaky peek, a little bit of a glimpse at what they're up to there. Is that the case, Paul? Oh, I think I might be able to do that. Oh, we'll I see. think you might. <laughs> Don't forget, guys, live after this show, um, the Paranormal Concept Show goes live as soon as we get clear from the studio. And we're talking about Nazis and the occult with the lovely Andy Mercer. All you have to do is keep refreshing your page until we go live. But we'll be grabbing a quick cup of tea before we do that. I'm just warning everybody, it might be a few minutes longer (laughs) than the normal. Um, But that is what's going to be happening after this show finishes. So I'm going to love you and leave you guys there. Have a great evening. We We will. Hopefully you have lots of spooky happenings. <laughs> That'd be nice. Something to convince my Paul anyway, right? <laughs> Never going to happen. Never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Again, guys, don't forget to refresh your page for the next show tonight. On that note, we say thank you very much for the Haunted Antiques Paranormal Research Centre for allowing us to do a live show from there tonight. And thank you very much for listening. On that note, we all bid you a very farewell and a good night. Say good night, good night. guys. <laughs> thank you for listening. Don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.